can expect to see the face of Chicano culture over many years. Uh, I've been doing this collection for a little over 40 years, maybe even more. I, I don't know. I, I lost track of time. But uh, uh, and it has been a pleasure and it's been the joy of my life to not only collect the art, uh, but to put it together, and make it available for everybody to see. Uh, we've, with this collection, we've played in over fifty museums, uh, including the Smithsonian, LACMA, uh, the De Young in San Francisco, the uh, the uh, uh, fifty museums <laughs> um, uh, of the top museums in the country, and and we introduced Chicano art to communities that heretofore had not even thought they had any Mexicans there, and when the show came to their town they came out of the woodwork and so it was really a, a really awesome display of just how in, uh, saturated the latino presence here is in this country and went on for seven years thanks to our sponsors uh, target stores and hewlett packard but target stores stayed uh, uh, with the show for seven years as it toured and uh, we had we would have uh, eight to ten thousand people come to an art opening uh, and uh, because uh, Los Lobos would play and they had free tequila, so you know that was the that was the, that was the draw, you know. But uh, but I, and 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 I came to the end of this this kind of collecting period, and I well, just like all other people in my position that have large collections, they wonder what's going to happen now. What am I going to do with it? I can't keep it all under the bed, you know, and. And all of a sudden, from from out of the sky came this offer from the city of Riverside uh, to in, uh, enshrine the collection in a building that they had available for uh, for uh, uh, because their town library is now they're going to build a new one. They, they they had to repurpose their old library, which is a beautiful, I mean, a beautiful mid century uh, 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 building and and right in the, the heart of downtown. Uh, Riverside, it's a 66,420 square feet, which of 420 being the operative number, you know, and I knew I took that as a sign, you know, that we we're supposed to be there. And so, uh, and, you know, and I've really come to the point that, and, and I've, I've mentioned this to a lot of people as we've gone on, I said, well, why, why is it happening now? I, and I've come to the conclusion that because it's supposed to happen. And that's the only thing that I can think of that really makes sense. It's supposed to happen. So just get out of the way and let it happen and work as hard as you can to support it as we go on. And so far, the community, I, I've been thunderstruck by the, the, the support of the community everywhere. Uh, and and, and, and um, not, only the, not only the community of, of business people, but the community in Riverside and the Inland Empire who have... Uh, unbelievably supported this effort so i want to thank you very much for everybody coming tonight and uh, and carlos is not going to play for two hours i think it's i think it's really beautiful thing because you know the thing with art is that you know the artists a lot of times will do a painting do a piece a sculpture whatever and you know then people go and contemplate it and in a certain sense it asks the questions, you know, you look at a piece of art and it'll ask a question and then it'll be us, the people that are experiencing that work of art that will seek the answer, you know, as we go. And Carlos, for you, I know that uh, uh, last year you put out a record that really touched me a lot. It's called In Search of Mona Lisa. And one of the first museums that actually in the world that opened itself up to the public, it's one of the oldest museums in the world, was the Louvre. And so for you, Carlos, it seems that like when you went to the Louvre and you saw the Mona Lisa, this wonderful work of art, you know, by Leonardo da Vinci, it really touched you, man. And, and, and tell us about that experience. Well, we uh, we played the night before in, uh, at Bercy. And, um, and so we, we were really high, you know, the next day uh, we had a day off. And I brought my, four, my two sisters and, and Cindy, my wife, and they said, "Hey, what are you doing for a, uh, you know, for your day off?" And I go, "I don't know." It goes, uh, "You want to go to the Louvre?" I go, "What's that?" It goes, "Man, you've been here since 1970, and you don't know what this is." And I go, "No, what is it?" He says, "It's this the most incredible museum ever in the world." So they took me there, and uh, I couldn't believe it. The line to go see Mona Lisa was like seeing Beyonce or Adele or or Rihanna. You know, I mean, it was a 
biggest line I ever seen to see someone like that, you know? And so when we got to it, we got to wait in line and even through the whole corridors. And, and then uh, when we got to finally her room, she has her own air conditioning room. You know, yeah. like, and she had an, a whole ocean of like Japanese tourists in front of her. And so I said, well, you know, uh, uh, the line, I mean, there's too many people, I, I can't get close, you know. So finally, slowly, they, they kind of open up and I went and got really close to her. And the closer I got, and this is a true story, the closer I got, I, I started looking at her. I mean, really, really up close. And then I heard his voice says, hi. I go, hi. She goes, remember me? I go, of course, I'm not going to say no. I said, yeah. You know, she goes, when we were lovers in another time. And I was like, oh, you know. So that started the whole thing because... As you know, for, for, for artists, we hear the unknown. It speaks to us very clearly. Uh, artists are real artists when they dwell in the unknown and, and, and unpredictability. If, if you're predictable, you're, you're not too much of an artist because you're predictable. You know, you're supposed to. Anyway, hooking up with her and also uh, we also put out this album called uh, Africa Speaks because everybody knows that, you know, I, I, I grew up in 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 outland and then Tijuana. But when I got to San Francisco, uh, somebody invited me to a picnic, you know, una tardeada or something. And when I got there, I noticed that uh, uh, in this block, there was like musica tropical, which they call now salsa, mariachis, and a rock and roll band. So I, ho I heard the whole music at the same time. And I went, oh, that's what it is. So that's what Santana became. He became a, a multidimensional capirotada, you know, of all these sounds. But for me, always the foundation is the is the drum, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm attracted to the drum. My father taught me violin, which is like melodias and everything. But I found out more and more through the shamans that uh, the the new kids, the new kid on the block, which is called. Christianity and Catholics people, they're the new kids on the block because shaman's been here before any of that, you know, before Christ or Allah or Chango, you know, the, the shamans know that the way to connect, like you hook up your iPhone to your laptop, you got to MIDI up and you got to go Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. That's why you use the drums and then the, the herbs, the medicine, you know, because you need to hook up with the higher spirit. That's where you get supreme creativity, you know? And I, this is the moment where I, I say for Dolores and Cheech and everyone, uh, an art, there's artists and con artists only, you know? And an artist really elevates people into a higher consciousness. An artist really brings people hope and courage and, and, and propels you to believe that you can also create miracles and blessings. It's a blessing to be right here with the Lotus because everybody knows that she is our generala, you know, the way, the way she puts things together before there was like social media or whatever. I envision the Lotus and Kamala Harris really changing what's happening because it's not happening. So I think, I, I think that Kamala, our sister Kamala hooking up with the Lotus and having like a powwow council kind of thing that was going to take us into where we're supposed to really be with bringing unity, harmony, and peace on earth. How about that? Oh, Carlos, that is so beautiful, bro. That is so beautiful. And I think that really inspiration uh, a lot of times really comes from just, you know, the unexpected, you know, and I think that's one of the very beautiful things that you had happen, you know, with uh, seeing the, 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 the Mona Lisa. But, you know, Teach, one of the things that I've always really that you know i saw the chicano visions exhibit at the smithsonian in 2002. you know i was there and i was a, a consultant for an exhibit that was called latin jazz a perfect combination and in the next room here was you know these incredible you know pieces and i just was blown away and uh, our wonderful friend you know and somebody may he rest in peace renee yanez you know had curated it which I thought really was a very beautiful thing. And I was just, you know, blown away by it because it was just such a wonderful thing. But, you know, talk a little bit about the people that have perhaps helped you to elevate your appreciation and helped you to kind of take this, you know, massive collection that you have 
and put it in a way so that it actually, you know, is this entire s scope, if you will, of an exhibit, which really, you know, is in itself a masterful work of art in the presentation. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it is. I mean, it's exactly as you portrayed it. Uh, the thing is that art is the only thing that we leave behind as a culture. It is the only thing. Uh, it says who we were, what we believed in, what we held precious, what we loved. <clears throat> and there is no, uh, uh, there's no uh, a museum dedicated to the art of the deal. But thousands of years later, they still go and see the Sphinx or the pyramids uh, because it re represents eternity. Uh, so uh, museums and art is the only thing we, we do. It tells us who, who we are and it's renewable all the time. And so I, I always felt in this whole journey, I always felt blessed every single second of the time, not only because I, I knew what the art was when I saw it, uh, I had the money to collect it, and and I had the 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 per, uh, the the, the uh, fame in order to proselytize for it all over the country, and people would listen, and 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 I always uh, 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 assumed the position of I'm bringing you a gift. Here is this beautiful rare jewel, and it's yours to share mm. with everybody. And <clears throat> what happened is is is. Every stop we made along the way, there was 14 stops in the, in the uh, Chicano Visions tour, the first tour. I, every time I uh, went to a new museum and, and, and saw the interaction of the crowd and everybody that came to see it, I felt this collection uh, uh, slipping away from me. But it wasn't, I would, <clears throat> it wasn't being taken from me. It was being given to them over the process of the years. And I